This is the front end of my Chrysler Crossfire 2004 model. As you can see, the headlight housings are badly fogged, and I have an out headlight, which is prompting me to upgrade to HID headlights. They should be uh, light blue in color instead of these uh, rather orange or yellow colored headlights. And hopefully, after I'm done, we'll freshen up these lenses a little bit make it very apparent that the uh, headlights have been changed out and upgraded. Quick view of the HID headlight kit that I received in the mail today. These are the ballasts. Not overwhelmingly impressed with them. There's uh, only one side is actually steel, the rest of them is plastic. The bulbs themselves appear to be a little more rugged than the other kits that I've seen, but I'm not wild about the connectors. connectors here. The process of creating the mounting plates is pretty easy. You go ahead and uh, measure off three and a half inches. This uh, particular piece of sheet metal is uh, 24 inches by 6 inches. So this cutout will be 3.25 inches by 6 inches, which will mount nicely to the interior of the fender of the crossfire. Drilling a hole in the top left corner of the mounting plate to fit over the stud that goes on the driver's side interior fender. This is the interior fender wall of the Crossfire's driver's side. As you can see here, there's plenty of room to mount the HID ballast. And you will be able to mount it directly to the headlight, at least the electrical connections as there's the headlight housing on the front of the crossfire. As with any installation you'll want to go ahead and clean up the interior fender for our double-sided tape later. To the left looks like a sensitive piece of electronic equipment so we'll go ahead and avoid spraying that with the simple green solution in order to clean up the fender well. I just go ahead and use couple of paper towels for this. At this time the mounting plate has been outfitted with sticky sided mounting tape, double sided tape, and it will be used to adhere it to the inside of the fender well. I'm going to apply the mounting plate to the top of the stud. Firmly attach the plate to the inside of the fender. Now that we have this side almost installed, let's move the passenger side of the vehicle. And before we apply any mounting tape, this surface will need to be cleaned. Right back here by the alternator you can see the mounting stud for a wire loom. That wire loom will be where we will attach our additional mounting plate for the HID ballast. You see here the simple green has uh, been given some time to really soak into the filth that's on the interior of the engine compartment here. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the, this inside fender area. We're not able to mount the mounting plate in the same place on the passenger side having to put it down here by the alternator because the inlet for the radiator uh, coolant is right directly behind the headlight housing on the passenger side so there's just not enough room for the HID ballast and that's why we're putting it here. As you can see here, I have the mounting plate down by the stud that's holding the wire loom for the alternator. I'm going to go ahead and mark on the plate where I want to drill, or rough estimate where I want it to drill. I'm going to move it, I'm going to move it over a little bit more. There we go. That ought to give us ample space to mount the ballast 
and not interfere with the operation of the alternator. Uh, box end wrench here, 10 millimeter on the bolt that's holding down the wire loom for the alternator on the passenger side of the vehicle. Go ahead and use whatever you got, a ratchet. You'll need a deep weld socket for this. Once again, it's 10 millimeter, and with a little bit of effort, it should just come right off of the interior of the fender. Next up is applying the tape and mounting the plate. And there it is. We've attached some tape to the side of the mounting plate. We are now going to attach it to the interior passenger side fender. Okay, as you can see here, the mounting plate for the HID ballast is in place for the passenger side and the driver side. Following the instructions on the Headlight Lens Restore Kit, go ahead and restore your headlight glass to be good as new. This is still very uh, foggy and distorted, cloudy if you will, uh, headlight lens. And I plan to restore it with this kit. You follow the instructions on the side. Oops, that's in Spanish. Follow the instructions on the side. Use the pads and the spray solution inside, and hopefully, in due time, this cloudy headlight lens will again be good as new. Hey guys, just wanted to break into the uh, wiring here for the HID. You do not need an electrical engineer degree or license to make this work. Uh, this is the plug coming into the back of the headlight assembly. It is uh, 12 volts and it comes in off of a wire loom. It's actually coming in from the other direction, but to make this uh, drying a little more simplistic, uh, I'll bring it in from the other side here. Um, there is a plug on the inside of this headlight uh, socket. What you'll do, you'll uh, pull this headlight socket. There is uh, two sides and unfortunately they're not mar marked positive or negative. The negative side of the terminal is the one with two wires going into it. The positive side of the terminal is the one with one wire going into it. And you will be running, uh, this is power out from the headlight assembly into the ballast. You will be running some wire down to the ballast. Let's not forget the positive side. There we go. This is into the ballast and then from the ballast up to the light bulb. And then the bulb will go back in. In a moment I'll show you how to trim the rubber cup that goes on the back of the uh, headlight portal. And you will see that you can actually make it fairly watertight. This is the driver's side assembly. I wanted to pay close attention here to the wiring situation. Um, the former retaining clip that was in the system uh, kind of battened down the wiring harness as you can see over to the left. You see a uh, uh, kind of a black and blue um, wiring clip there. Um, that will not be battened down now, but on the inside of the housing there is actually a uh, looks like a bit of a paper clip um, granite made made out of plastic uh, inside of the headlight assembly that you will attach that uh, wiring to the rubber cap that uh, can be seen here on top of the uh, high beam port uh, will then go over the top of these two uh, wiring harnesses. These are the harnesses that will eventually be attached to the ballast which as you see here right behind the headlight housing looking through the headlight hole. Here is the rubber cap for the uh, low beam or HID side of the light assembly. Uh, I've cut about a half inch slash 
right underneath the pull tab on the rubber cap in order to feed the power lines uh, through to the bulb and uh, return power from the assembly to the HID ballast. All right, success. As you can see, I have uh, HID and high beam on my passenger side. If we look inside the engine compartment, you can see the uh, mounted ballast down along the alternator. We shift to the other side, take a look at the uh, driver's side arrangement. There is the mounted balance on the mounting plate on the interior fender of the uh, driver's side. Follow the wiring harness around and we have HID and high beam on the driver's side. Uh, probably at a later date I will uh, upgrade to H7 bulbs for the high beam that are blue to go ahead and try to match the intensity of the HID as much as possible. But uh, for right now I'm happy with what I've got.